All right, today we're in class here at Pennsylvania Gunsmith School. We are going to observe this varmint rifle. It's 22-250, built on a Mauser. Uh, customer says it's shot out. We're gonna look at the throat erosion and bore condition while we're here. We have the Hawkeye bore scope set up and we are projecting to the television here. So as I slide, we are looking currently where the chamber ends and the case mount begins to engage the throat or freebore of this rifle. And you can see the distress and fire cracking. It's been kind of cleaned. You know, there's not a lot of flake debris, carbon deposits, but you can see the remnants where plans used to be, where the rifling started. And you can see this incredible distance as this throat erosion has happened. So as we travel down past the throat erosion, we start to see where there's a little bit more substantial lands, but they still have a lot of erosion and very bad fire cracking, if you will. So real quick, we'll travel down the barrel, looking at the lands and grooves, fire cracking. This is pretty much to the entire length of the bore. This is a, obviously a very seasoned rifle. Been on many prairie dog hunts. Uh, out at the end, it gets to be more about the carbon deposits. The rifling's a little bit stronger. But again, let's go back and look at our area of focus. When a rifle is really shot out or the groups really start to open, what we're normally talking about is that free bore throat area where the bullet actually jumps from the case mouth into the rifling. And again, that's right here where the rifling starts to run out and go to the case mount. We'll see that in a second. This is the rifling eroding, almost disappearing into the free bore area and to the end of the case mouth of the chamber. So when the bullet dives out of the case mouth and into the rifling, if it's not nice in the throat, it's not tight anymore, that can throw the bullet into the, the throat and engage in the rifling in all kinds of different ways. And if that imparts any defects on the jacket of the bullet, those imperfections can show up in the flight of the bullet. So one of the products that I like to use, stuff that we use here at the school, is United States Products Company. Um, the bore paste, which has long been used by bench rest shooters and all the professionals. It's a garnet-based compound. It's not as abrasive as the, the lapping compounds that barrel manufacturers use to hand lap their barrels. This is more for conditioning and cleaning. And when you get a barrel that's fire cracked like this, as you move, remove the carbon and copper deposits, this is kind of polishing it up behind it. Much better than if you use a, a liquid solvent or a copper solvent, all you're doing is taking the slickness of the bore away and exposing this fire cracking, which can have negative effects on your bore and your performance. So I'm gonna stop here, clean this gun using the bore paste. I'll show that process, and then we'll come back and give it a second look and see if this, this bore is savable.